And even I made a mistake because I misread the problem. Where's your packet? Uh, I've got it. Okay, you guys, put your phone away. We're not texting. 2012. Now, first look at the visuals. You have a, a chart here. Okay, you guys? We just have to be serious for less than three weeks. Okay? You guys have a chart here? Okay, Max? Put your book away, please. All right. Well, now when I see a chart here, I'm thinking probably they're going to ask for a slope. Okay, Casey? Take advantage of the fact that I'm a reader. <laughs> I also see possibly a Riemann sum or trapezoidal rule, area under the curve. So when I'm doing this, I kind of look at that. Okay, Samuel? Alex? Steve? Maybe I'll just send this home to the parents as the enzyme calls. Okay, the temperature of water in a tub is modeled by a strictly increasing, I have my extra copies up here on my desk. There may be some over there too. Here's a 2011, that's eight, 10, that's 11. Otherwise 12 is back there in the box. Okay, you guys? Shh. Guys, we don't have time for that. Call him up later. Twice differentiable function, no, it'll keep. Now, W is measured in degrees Fahrenheit, T is measured in minutes. It never hurts you to include units, even if they don't ask for it. But if they do ask for units, it hurts you not to include units. So, so you might always want to put the units in. Even if you do the units wrong and they're not being asked, we will not mark that against you. We will mark it against you if you round to fewer than three places. Okay, at t equals zero, the temperature of the water is 55. They gave it to me there, and they wrote it in words. The water is heated for 30 minutes, beginning at t equals zero. The values of W, what is W? The temperature of the water. This is a tub, like a hot tub. As selected at time for the first 20 minutes given in the table above. What are they asking for in A? Use the data in the table to estimate W prime of 12. What's the question asking for? No, it's W prime. What's W prime approximately equal to? The change in W over the change in time. What did you say? Put that away. Slope. <laughs> Guys, after in three weeks, you don't, you can do that all you want. He said the slope. That's right. Okay, so find the slope. You guys do it. Check. Find the slope. How are you going to find the slope? Now, do you know how many people did that upside down? A lot. But see, those are silly mistakes. You don't want to lose the point. any points that are, are silly mistakes like that. So do this problem. Use the data. Show the computations that lead to your answer. Okay, so you need to write this down. And you don't have to finish subtracting them. Okay, do you need a pencil, Lauren? Okay. Which one goes in the numerator? Okay, but you must show what you subtracted. I did. Okay? You can't just come up with whatever the difference is there divided by six. Won't work. You won't get the point. Okay, so we'll go and look at that answer. Okay? Okay. Good. This is enough. You okay? guys? This is enough to get your point. So if you did this correctly, but putting your calculator wrong, you lose the point back again. So there's no point. I haven't finished the question though. It says interpretation with units. What does this mean? Now, whenever they ask you to interpret, we're looking for three things always. Okay, Samuel, what's one of them? What does that mean? That's a positive number. What's happened to the water temperature? This is a slope, this is a rate of change. As time goes between 
at, at, not at time goes, it's at T equals 12, right? What's the temperature? It's approximately, the rate of change of the temperature is increasing by 1.017 degrees per what? Minutes? Is that minutes? Yeah. Well, you could just write down this instead of the 1.017. You do not have to change it to that. Although I should know if it's increasing or not. So there are three things, yes. To get the point here for the interpretation, you need the temperature, the temperature is increasing okay, at a rate Either you can use the difference quotient or you can actually figure it out. And when? 12 minutes. There's always three things. Well, why 12 minutes? Because it was W prime of 12. Okay? Yes. Well, let's go ahead and see what the rest of the problem has. Now, on the, on the test itself, and I didn't show the other class, and I could show you actually the A, B question. I don't have that one in here. But this is what the books look like. Kind of nice to know what it looks like. Sad, you need to put your phone away, please. And it has the question all typed out here for you in the different places. That was new last year. Before you had to transcribe from your sheet like that to this. This is much nicer. We don't mark anything on there. So there's no marks by the reader. So I don't know what the reader did. Yeah, that's exactly what it looks like. This is the BC. But this is number one, so it's the same. In fact, that wouldn't even hurt us to, to go through one of these. This is well, still the same. Three problems are the same on AB and BC. The AB scores are not as high as the BC scores. Okay, so here's the first question. And we could go through and, and grade it. They have 5.4 degrees Fahrenheit per minute. No interpretation, nothing, zero out of two. That doesn't mean you can't get more later on. So we, I could hand, hand these out and you could, you could actually give points and we could talk about it. it. Takes time, we have a lot to review. But we just, we just don't have time. Maybe, maybe the, I have AV exams as well. But this is, this is just a BC student, still the same question. And on the College Board website, actually you can just take this and pass it around just to look at it. Um, on the College Board website, they have the average score. So you can grade yourself and then check your average, the average score, see how you compare it. Now we are going to do summative assessments on these three response questions so that we can get, we want to make sure you're doing the work and so we can get some more grades. And this should be easy. We are going to do summative assessments on these. I highly recommend you don't watch, but you do. I am. A little bit. Come on. Okay. Shh. No, they basically determine a cut score. So if a lot, everybody got all the exam right, everybody would get a five. It's not curved by, well, we have to have so many fives and so many ones. In fact, one year, the, the class, the students did so poorly, there were fewer passing students that year. They did not lower the standard. <laughs> yes, but even those students didn't do well, so they didn't pass. It was, it was disappointing. Okay, let's do the next question. Use the data in the table to evaluate the integral of W prime of T. Zach, what is the antiderivative of W prime? I got two for the price of one over there. What is the integral of W prime? Look at that. That'd be plus C. Uh, but, pardon? This is B. Use the data. So what is this using the fundamental theorem of calculus? Samuel, what is this going to be? Samuel, this is going to be what? W of T evaluated where? At 0 and 20. That's not a hard question, is it? So it's W, well, it's easy if you've practiced it. 
and they did the same question in 2011. So it's w of 20 minus w of zero. And what are you going to do? You're going to read them right off the, this chart right there. Now, is it positive or negative? That's a great answer, by the way. Is it positive? It's positive. Now, what does it mean? Now, forget the fact that this is calculus. Just look at the question. What does this mean? This is the temperature at zero, and this is the temperature at 20. What's happened to the temperature? No, that should be 55. Uh, no, it, this is the temperature when T is zero. Oh, I did these guys, sorry. You're right. Okay. Okay. So what is this? But you don't have to, you don't have to subtract it. Because if you subtract it wrong, okay, 16 what? Units. Degrees. Is it Fahrenheit? Okay. They do switch back and forth. 2011 it was Celsius. Okay. So what does that mean? When the time was zero and you have the temperature of the time 20 minutes later, it's positive 16 degrees. What does it mean? Forget the fact that it's math class. What's it? What's it? The temperature is increased by 16 degrees when? From zero to 20. <laughs> Always three things. There it is. You're right. One point for the 16. And it said using correct units. Never hurts to put the units in. So the temperature warmed or increased by 16 degrees Fahrenheit from 0 to 20. So you got the number and you have the units and you have the time. Now that's four points. That's more, almost half the problem. Was that so bad? How many points do you want to get for? Six would be the, to get a five. Nobody ever gets nine. Nine. Uh, well, you can get a nine on one problem, but you won't get them on all. We're, we are picky. We're picky when we grade. No. Never. Wait. So you're saying no one's ever got nine. Nobody's ever gotten a perfect test. No, on like a single FRQ though. Oh yeah, we get nines. Not that many. Because we're very particular. Because what you might forget here is degrees Fahrenheit. Or you might forget 0 to 20. You don't get the point. We're very picky about that. So always look for three things. Now, C. Let's do this one. Let's do this one. From 0 to 20, the average temperature is this. That looks familiar. What is that? Inter well, how about if I wrote it this way? Integral from 0 to 20 of W dt over 20 minus 0. Anybody right? We just did it yesterday. Average value of the function. So I'm going to use a left Riemann sum with four subintervals using the data. So you're going to find the area under the curve. Guess what? What's the easiest way to do that? If you don't know what to do, draw a picture. Oh, that's like the it's the rectangles, but I want a left Riemann sum. So I graphed it. Zero is at 55, four is at 57, nine is at 61, 15 is at 67.9, and 20 is up at 71. By the way, if you got 1,000 degrees per minute or whatever as a rate of change, would that make sense? No. no. Now, we're looking for the average temperature here. What should my answer be between? Okay. Yeah, Declan, that's, a, that's what the exam looks like. Well, still three problems are the same. Okay, what should your temperature be between here? Jacob, what should the temperature be between if we're looking for the average temperature? That's right. Makes sense. Okay, you guys? You don't want to wait till next week to start this. Good. Tell me what the answer is for those rectangles. By the way, is this an overestimate or under? This is a left. Oh, or should I add that off? Or an email.
They're doing more on the bombing. Okay. Is that an overestimate or an underestimate? And how do you know? Underestimate. Okay, how are you going to know? Because they ask us how we know. Because what? Why are they under the curve, though? What if I have this curve? I'm going to do a left rim on some under, under this curve. Careful. Still, still be an under because it's full left. Well, no, there's nothing that guarantees that. But what? Here it's over, right? Here it's under. What is it that determines if it's an overestimate or underestimate? Not the, derivative. Not the second derivative. The tangent line. This is decreasing and this is increasing. And I think you're going to have to know it. What if I draw a curve like that? Is it concavity or is it increasing, decreasing? That's really what it comes down to. So, and it says it's increasing. It's going to be an under, a left stream on some will be an underestimate. It's under. It says it's strictly increasing. But I picture it's just this. Here it's under. This is under. On that side, it's over. If it's a decreasing function, it's over. So they might do a decreasing function this year. I don't know. Okay, guys. Kate, do you have that done now? All you have to do is set it up. You do not have to evaluate it. So set it up real quickly. Well, what's the area of the first rectangle? It's base, which is 4, times the left side, which is 55. Now, if you multiply that out in your calculator, you're going to get no credit. I graded this one. Why no? You had to show what you were multiplying. You could have done 4 times W of 0, whatever is it? What is that W? W of 0. You could do that, but you had to show it. You couldn't just come up with an answer. You couldn't multiply 4 times 55 out and write that number down. Yep. But take advantage of the fact that I'm a reader, so I know. If I didn't grade, I wouldn't know. I would say, yeah, I just write down what you have. Yeah. Because that's what they require. Because I'll tell you, here's the rationale, you guys, so that you know when you're on the exam. Okay, you guys, listen up. You want to convince the reader you know what you're doing. So if you just put down the product of this, you could have read it from a neighbor. You could have guessed. But if you write down 4 times 55, it's clear that I'm taking base times height. It's clear I understand the question and what to do. Just think about it. you got to be clear. Are you ready to reveal that answer? Now, students did very well on this problem, on this part of the problem. You either can, you know, you can write that or that. This will get you your two points. This will give you those two points right there. You don't have to go to 60.79. Is that clear? You have to show what you multiplied, either 4 times W of 0 or 4 times 55. And we know it's an underestimate because our function is increasing. A left Riemann sum is used and the function is strictly increasing. If it were not, now strictly increasing means it, it's increasing always. It doesn't increase for a little while and then decrease and then increase again. Okay, Jack, did you hear that? I don't think so. Oops, too far. Yes. Because it's the area, it's the width of the base. It's this base times that height. And I think if you did a right Riemann sum, you earn, you could earn two points out of the three if you did it correctly. So make sure you get the correct side. <laughs> I, and I'll, I don't, I don't remember. I, I know I just graded it last year, but it's still almost a year. Okay. How many points are we up to? Now, you guys, is that hard to find the area under that curve, Jack? Is that hard to find that area? Look, how many points are we up to? I might as well just go home. <laughs> two plus two plus three. 
Okay, seven points so far. Jack, put your phone away, please. Now, what's the, oh, the last one's really important, you guys. All right, that's the easy one. Except, re yes. <laughs> so, read it carefully. I'm, I'm sending this video home to all the people whose names I've mentioned today. Okay, Declan, how are we going to do this? Declan, I don't see anything written down. Why are you writing it now? He's got all his space. He's written down where there's no space. Okay, how are you going to do this, Jack? First off, I'm given a function. I'm given w prime, and it looks ugly. I'm probably going to integrate it because you're only going to do one of two things, take a derivative or an antiderivative. And it's a calculator section. Lauren, shh. Now, it says you, you, you're going to do what I didn't do. I read 0 to 25, but it's 20 to 25. The, they actually found a function to model the temperature increase. They, right, because you'd never figure out what that is. I want to find out what the temperature of the water is going to be at 25. This is the fundamental theorem of calculus. If I integrate W prime from 20 to 25, what do I get? I get W of 25 minus W of 20. This is an equation. Not, see if I can slide that a little bit. That's an equation. Not that one. Because guess what? I know some of these things. I can use my calculator to find this. And you should do it right now. Because don't assume you know how to use your calculator. You need to practice. You practice time on the exam is not the right time. And guess what? You know W of 20. What's W of 20? W of 20 is W of 20. So if you know this, and you know that, can you find W of 25? Fundamental theorem of calculus, you will see this multiple times on the exam. No, because I would put this into Y1. But you have to set it up like this. OK, you guys, I wrote mine this way. That gets the points. The other way to write it is it's your starting temperature plus the integral from 20 to 25. It's the same thing. You have W prime. That's in Y1. It's F N I N T. It's that ugly looking function. Now, what do you have to write on the exam? Integral and all you have to write is W prime. You don't have to type, you don't have to write that again because they clearly define, find it. I would put this into white one, 0.4. Square root of T, don't let the square root go over the cosine. That's the problem with pretty printed does if you're not careful. Yeah, that's the problem. It's got to be exactly that way. Jake, put your phone away and work on some problems. It's not, I don't know, let me check. Okay, there it is. Here's my calculator. 20 to 25. That's the function. Oh, I know what you did wrong. What what mode should you be in? Radian. <laughs> Degrees wrong. <laughs> then you have to worry about the chain rule and stuff. No. Did you change your mode? Okay, let me check it. 0.4 square root of x cosine. Oh, you forgot the x in there. That's why you got the same thing. No, it's not there. Not that x. Go ahead and try it again. Make sure you're in radian. No. There's an X here and there's an X there. Wow, there's, it was right. No, you didn't have that X. Now there's. Now you changed it to tangent. Well, I, that X is not in the right place. What did you do? You really messed it up now. Oh, let's see what you got here. 
X. Gee, I had it, and then you press X, and then there's two X's. Wait, why, why no, you didn't. You didn't have it. Okay. I don't know, dude. Okay. <laughs> okay. This part is two. That's the integral. And then you have to add in where you started at 71. Yes. You guys, what? Without pretty pretty, it's F N I N T. Now, you can write this on your paper, but you will get no credit for the F N I N T. You must have it written like that, or the way I wrote it up at the top. And I will put the function into y1, comma, x, comma, 20, comma, 25. But you must be in radian mode. OK, we're going to do 2011 if you have it. You can bring it up. I'm going to stop the recording, and I'll let you try it. They're all nine. How can you prepare for the exam? Sit down and do a couple problems, and then score yourself and see what you're getting. If you're looking at the answer key to get your points, then you aren't getting anything. Hey, guys, you need to be working on the math, I mean, unless, you, unless you don't want to you know, care. I don't know. But everybody in this room can get a passing score if you work at it. But you have to do the work. We're going to do 2011. Let me see. Yeah? No, you're not integrating the 71. That's outside the integral. You're integrating it. Number two. And let's check your mode. Okay, second quit. Now, do you know how to get this again? Second, yeah. enter. So something's not right there. It's 20 to 25. You just copied it wrong. Oh, score to X. Oh, I bet your, your square root. Oh, it should end there. Oh, it's point zero zero six. No, it's not point zero zero six. Point zero six. Now do second enter. No, second. There it is. Oh, enter just did it. Well, that's interesting. Two. Number two. Yes. Oh. Got to do it here. Sorry. Oh my goodness, we are way behind. Now we have study sessions tomorrow. Okay, this is called the tea and biscuits problem. We give these problems names. Actually, we don't give them names, but our our question leaders do. Yes. This is tea and biscuits. Let's just look at it for a second. I wish they did in AP like they do in IB. They give you 20 minutes to read through the exam first and I, before you start doing it. Just reading it, yes, because there's a lot of reading. And you only have 15 minutes. That, that too. Okay. I think they're a lot harder. Because they're written weird. There choice, though? Yes, there are choices, but there's no choices here. Okay, you guys. That looks the same. You guys. That looks the same as the last problem. And look at that. It's one tenth times the integral. There's another average value of a function. And then this says, using trapezoids, trapezoidal rule. It's not a Riemann sum, it's a trapezoid sum. And then it says, integrate h prime. What is the integral of h prime? It's h. Well, an integral undoes a derivative, just like a derivative undoes an integral. And this, again, you're given a derivative here. So, so I'm probably going to integrate it. I doubt I'm going to differentiate it again. There it is. OK. So try that problem. I'm going to pause my recording. OK, guys. I like the answer negative eight thirds better than this. Now, if you round to two places or truncate to two places, 
You guys, you'll lose a point one time and one time only on that question. But if there are six problems and you do it every, every single problem, that's six points you've just lost right off the top. If you're going to go to decimals, you have to have at least three, but put them all down there. There's no downside to writing down the wrong numbers after the first three. Now, you guys, negative eight-thirds by itself will not get you the point because you must show either this line or that one because that's how they grade it. Hey, guys, how did they determine, Jack, how to grade it? You have to convince the reader that you know what you're doing. Negative eight-thirds could be your neighbor's answer. Could have been just blind luck. So they want to know that you really know how to do the problem. So you show them the subtraction. It's just the way it works. Hey, are you ready for B? Yeah. Now that's the trapezoidal rule. What does it mean? The temperature is what? This is what? The average temperature. Is it decreasing? It's not asking that for that. They're asking for the average temperature between what? 0 and 10 in degrees Celsius, I believe. Okay. Now, it's the average temperature, degrees Celsius, 10 minutes, 0 to 10. Three things. If you're not writing down three things, you're not going to get the point. At least that when I'm grading it, that's, those are the things I'm looking for. And I just, I mean, I count them, kind of. I don't know if other teachers have noticed it or not. It's accurate, though. No. What? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and you get a point for your trapezoidal sum, and you get both of these points here, by the way, for just doing this. You do not have to add it up. Because it's one half the base, and the base on the first trapezoid is two. This base, or not base, it's height, sorry. This height is three, this height is four, this height is one. That's these numbers. Two, three, four, one. And this is averaging the bases. The bases are the heights of the function. It's on its side. But you get both points for that blue circle. Okay, so now what are we up to? Four. Yes, it does say degree C. Now, I don't have to put it here. It just said interpret it. But it wouldn't hurt you to put it. Now, if you, here you guys, listen to this. If you don't write it here, but you do degrees Celsius here, you still get the point. So I always have to, I always have to look for that. Because a lot of times they won't put it here, but it's with the answer, so we give it to you. Could change this year. I mean, I never know how we have a different, you know, we have different question leaders. Okay, how about C? Oh, C was easy, wasn't it? What is the integral of H prime of T between 0 and 10? It's H of 10 minus H of 0. Well, what's H of 10? 43 minus 66. So what does that mean? What's it? No, it's. What's the function? Uh -uh. So it's in the context of this problem. So it's the temperature is decreasing in the first 10 minutes. How many degrees? 16, right? Do I have three things there? I think I do. One, the value of the integral, negative 23, and the meaning. And again, if you put the degree Celsius here and not there, you still got the point. That's important to remember, especially so you don't panic. So now what are we up to? How many points? <laughs> okay, we might as well go home. <laughs> okay, and D, you're given that ugly looking derivative. Now, listen carefully on this. One school, or not one school, okay, Lauren, a number of schools are using cast calculators, which will integrate this. This one you can integrate. The one on the previous problem can't be done. Now, I can do this problem in my head with a calculator at least. I could integrate this. They did not give any points for that. You are only allowed to use definite integrals, like between 0 and 10. If you do the plus C, you will not get any points 
unless you actually show the use substitution and prove to the reader that you actually integrated it by hand. Otherwise, the assumption on the, on the readers is that you used your task calculator and did that, and that's not allowed on the exam. Can you use the calculator on You may use it, but if you integrate this and do plus C, you'll get the same answer, final answer, but you won't, you won't get the points for it. And I argued because I said, I can do that in my head, but they said, nope, we're not going to do that. We want a definite integral, and that's what you were graded on. So be careful with that. It's always definite integrals. You can check it with a cast if you want. There's nothing to say you can't. If they ask for a maximum va uh, value of a function on the calculator section and you just graph it, that's not going to do it. No, you won't get anything for it. Only the integrals, the derivatives, zeros, and intersections. That's it. So what do you think you're going to do with this one? Because we just did this one. We're going to integrate from where to where. Zero, because I know the temperature zero is zero ten. to 10 of B prime, which gives me B of 10 minus B of zero. I know B of zero. I can find that. I can find the biscuit temperature at 10. And what's the T temperature at 10? No. The T this is the T. Is the you have to read the problem and understand the question. So they're asking for the difference in those. Three points. One for knowing to integrate this. That's one point right there. One point for using that, and then one point for the final answer. And you know, you could just put your numbers in here, not subtract if you wanted to. It doesn't matter. So, did you guys get like seven points at least, maybe? This is this. Yeah, well, you don't have lunch next. <laughs> did they have that today? What's our time? Well, yes, in a minute. Okay, you guys, you have an assignment to do because we didn't get there. Too many interruptions. Now, you need to be working outside of class. I want you to try a related rate problem tonight for Thursday, because I won't see you tomorrow. 2008. We have to nail this one down, this kind, area volume. There it is, number three. Oil, it, sit down, it's not time to go. Sit down, please. Okay. In 2008, this problem came out in, in May, and guess what happened in the summer of 2008? Remember BP in the Gulf of Mexico? They had the oil leak in the Gulf of Mexico, and it happened to be right after they had done this problem. And this is a great problem Whoa. because it's very applicable, and this is a related rate problem. You are given a lot of stuff. Okay, you are given this. You are given the when. Where is the when? Right there. There's a when. I want the rate of change of the height. I'm given the rate of change of the radius. It's a related rate problem. Okay, it's not time to go. I know, I always let you guys out a little early. This is five minutes early. No, no, no.